My enemies are many. My equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. In the land of pharaohs and kings, they said Egypt could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Russia could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor. Oh man, you know, I just love that intro. It has to be my favorite intro for any Total War. And you're probably thinking, of course it's your favorite intro, Paula. You love Napoleon, and that's like an alternative history where he's burning down victory, marching to London. Well, you're right. You're right. No, I'm just kidding. I just love it because it's so simple. It's just Napoleon talking... And uh, you got some like cutscenes of battles and you know them burning down victory, which of course it's alternative history. This never happened. He never uh, burnt down victory. In fact, you can visit victory still to this day. It's one, I think it's the oldest commissioned ship or the oldest ship still active. Of course, obviously, the British Navy, the Royal Navy, doesn't actually use it. And I don't even think it sets sails. It just sits there. Um, unlike the USS Constitution, which is the oldest sailing ship still commissioned. In the Anyways, I'm getting a little off track. I love that intro. It's really cool. And now we've got another Napoleon battle. Uh, I want to give a huge shout, a shout out to General Cody. This, Oh, by the way, this is Waterloo, of course. You saw it in the title, so it's going to be a big fight. I mean, just look at all the troops here. Look at all the troops. This is sent in by General Cody. Cody is a great friend of mine, very supportive of my channel, and, you know, I think he's just an awesome dude that makes awesome videos, and he actually uh, made a video of this battle as well, so please check out his perspective, a link to his channel uh, down in the video description. He loves the gun time period, like the line battle time periods like Empire, Napoleon, War of Rights, uh, th those kind of games, so he's got great great videos and uh, Very underrated youtuber in my opinion, so check out his videos. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. Anyways Today we are playing uh, Napoleon's Eagles is what the mod is called. It's pretty much NTW3 battles, if I'm not mistaken. It's just the historical battles of NTW3. I don't know what else it adds to this game. I think, uh, I think that's it. I, I think it just takes a small chunk from the NTW3 and then makes it, like, make it its own separate mod. Maybe because it's like, it runs better with the ca without the campaign, or... I'm not really sure, but... All you need to know is that it's super easy to install. You can get it off ModDB, and you can play all these cool uh, historical battles, which I would love to do more of these because, I mean, how do you beat this scale? I mean, look at look at the look at this. Look at this. Look how many troops are on the battlefield. And uh, this is from Cody. This is his words here. This battle is just insane. It's crazy. There's uh, like fantastic cav engagements and just a crazy fight. So I'm really excited about this one. So let's dive into this one and get this started. So it looks like the British forces are taking the very strong defensive structures here, the farmhouse and whatnot. Uh, they've got troops ready to hold, ready to hold off the, uh, the French, which they did historically. Uh, they held off in these buildings for a very long time. Very tough assault. Uh, and you can see that the French are starting to kind of mass around the building. Artillery is now shelling the building. Look at even the British troops are already kind of... Their morale is in orange. Uh, so they've... What is this? The 7th Belgium and Fish... Fi fish... 5th <laughs> Dutch Militia. Very cool. 
So we've got the houses opening fire. We're not not houses opening fire, obviously, but people in the houses opening fire. Just trying to uh, soften up the numbers a little bit. Let's see what the French do here. I'm curious if he's if he's just gonna go for a full out charge and try to take it with brute force. Oh, some artillery. Oh, I think that was some friendly fire there. I saw the cannonball just whiz by from behind him. Uh, but I think they're gonna. Let's see. Maybe they'll take a more uh, passive approach and kind of fire at them and then charge, or maybe they'll just full on charge. Here they go. Looks like they're just moving up. Boom. So awesome. Hey, wait, there's something going on over here. No, no, it's just, okay. It looked like a little cav unit or something was pushing forward, but no, it's just this infantry unit still holding on to this building over here. Now firing at the flank of the French through the tree line, trying to soften up their numbers as they advance towards the main line that is holding the ridge. And here we go, guys. The French are now assaulting this line. It's gonna be it's it's gonna be pretty tough. I mean, first off, the sun is right in their eyes. Smoke is covering the, you know, the the it's it's making it hard to see is what I'm trying to say. And then of course this hill is not doing them any favors. So it's gonna be a pretty pretty tough push to take this ridge. And look how look at the scale of this. Look how awesome this is. It's so cool. It's so cool. I love this mod. And we have some breaking units here. Look at that, the United Kingdom already breaking with this unit. It is a militia troop, so um, it's kind of no surprise there. Let's hope that uh, if you're rooting for the, the British here, let's see if uh, these, these uh, units in the building can hold a little bit longer as more and more French troops begin to push on this position. Still trying to, he's just taking it nice and slow. You know, he's not rushing in. He's not uh, using overwhelming numbers. I mean, he kind of is, with, but with, like, skirmishing. Oh, wait, wait. Is this a push? Are the fr There we go. Now he's pushing in. Now he is pushing in. I wish we could go into this building and see how the fighting's going. But the fighting, I'm going to be honest, the fighting in buildings does not look great. Um, it is cool that you can actually fight in buildings, you know, in this game. And you can see them fight in these structures. But it doesn't look good. I really wish Total War would continue with this. And where you can have fights in buildings. Especially in siege battles. What I would do is just have it so when you have a unit go inside a building. The top of the building just kind of goes away. Like you can see through it. I think that would be a really cool mechanic. Because uh, even just like playing 12-12 or Total War Attila. Uh, they have a lot of these like big like church structures, these like big marketplace structures. That would be really cool if you could send a couple units in there to fight. Uh, I think it would make it really feel like a siege because you know you're storming into buildings and I don't know. I just think it would be awesome. But yeah, big push by the French, really trying to take control of these buildings early on. Let's see if the British will send down any reinforcements to help hold this. It doesn't look like it, and it seems like the French are closing in on the main line as we speak. Probably trying to prevent that. And look at this front line, man. So good. Another thing is, like, I don't like to use music for Napoleon Total War because the music is is the guns <laughs> it's the glorious guns and now look at oh my god look at all this french cav uh they are massing up and so are the british cav um, this is going to be a huge cav enga engagement guys a uh, little strange of a formation here look kind of going in with column but are they going to go in for a full-on charge and there's some british troops right on the flank here that the french cav does not see they're going to go ahead and they're like oh hey guys i think we should probably form a square here i don't <laughs> I don't know about you, but this looks a little concerning. Uh, but yeah, huge cav charge. Look at this. Look at this charge. So awesome. So big push by the French cav, and they are actually just, just breaking. 
the British. Like, it's not even close. And it's just a huge Cav engagement. Oof. And they just, that was kind of an awkward Cav engagement there. I'm not going to lie. It's just like the French kind of trotting their way in and just obliterating the British. Now, the good news is that the British aren't completely out. They're going to reform here. A lot of the, that's kind of how Cav plays out in this mod, uh, or at least in NTW3. Lots of breaking and returning, like, you know, historically, a cab would go in, break, reform, maybe go for another charge. I mean, they still have a huge unit here. 26 out of 36, um, 48 out of 53. I mean, they're still pretty healthy units, so I'm sure they're going to come back into this fight and go for another charge. But now the French are just full on pushing around the flank of the British. Is forming square to try to prevent the cab from uh, pushing into his lines. Good move there. And the line, in, the line engagement is getting steamy. Look at that. God, I love this mod. I love NTW3, man. So good. Uh, back over here, we've got more French Cav. So he's got two wings of French Cav on both flanks. Uh, and this one's kind of sitting back in reserve. We also have some artillery supporting this uh, kind of this flank. Let's go ahead and look at the British forces here where they've got a really solid line here. Really solid double stack. It's going to be pretty tough to break through this. Over here, though, they're not doing too bad. Uh, it, or the 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 French, the British do look like they they need a little bit more support over on this front. And the sound is just glitching out. Yeah, it does that. It does that. Hold on, I think I can fix it really quick. If we just turn this to 256, there we go. Okay. Uh, let me also turn up the effects a little bit. There we go. Much better. So that that fix that fixed the sound. Um, I, I I don't know why Napoleon does that. It always defaults to 128 for the sound instead of 258 or whatever it is. Uh, you just gotta change it. Whenever that happens to you guys in a Napoleon battle, if the sound just like goes mute, just turn up the uh, the sound setting. But yeah, the the epic line battle is still going on. The French are taking some casualties here. Actually, they might have broken. Now they're sending up the infantry. I think it's because the artillery doing canister shot in the bushes here. Really tough to see. But this artillery is definitely helping out the British a ton and in inflicting a lot of casualties on the French lines here. But look at this, like, look at this cab force. Huge cab force behind enemy lines. And they're, look at this push. They're going for a, like, full-on Rohan charge here against the British. Let's see if the British kind of scoot back. No, the British are going to, they're going to engage. We have some first Belgium carabiners against the Chasseur à Cheval, 11th Chasseur à Cheval. And over here as well, the Cav is engaging. I don't know, like the Cav engagements have been a little awkward in that it's like they're slowly trotting into the British lines. But more British Cav is massing, trying to maintain this this flank and not let the French have you know easy access behind his infantry. Here we go, more Cav going in for the charge. There we go. Here comes the charge a little bit, <laughs> and the British are going to counter charge. Big cav engagement here. They're out. They're now actually pushing some line infantry. So we got some Highlander foot to try to help deal with some of the cav because the British are struggling here a little bit, but they are winning on this flank. They got the six dragoons beating up on the twelfth Chasseur Cheval. And must rest 
Back over here, the British. Oh my God, look at this calf engagement. This is insane. Look at the scale of this. Just a huge fight. And I think the French are gonna lose this engagement thanks to the, all the, the French Cav come up, coming up as reinforcements. But this flank over here is open now. So it was all the Cav, the, the British Cav over on this side defending this flank. Well, now it's open for this French Cav to move in, but they're not going for it. Um, let's see what happens over here though. This is just an absolute brawl. This is why I love, I wish, I wish Total War was naturally the, this kind of scale. I get it, it doesn't run well, but I wish they could just figure out a way, like lower the graphics a little bit, you know? I don't even care. Your graphics are second to me. Scale and tactics, strategy, that's first to me. And uh, if they could like, you know, like even the graphics here look good enough to me. Like Napoleon's graphics, they've aged so well. Uh, and they're capable of making these battles, you know. Sure, it might be not super stable, but yeah, this is actually really close, guys. Really close between these two forces. Still cav engagements going on over here on this flank. We got the uh, troops in the back forming square trying to help out where they can. Landwehr, battery. Of course, the British army is more foreign than British, having a lot of troops, having a lot of Dutch troops, German troops, you know, uh, Belgium troops. But look at this, now the French have a flank going on on the British, and uh, they might wanna, the British might wanna quickly win that cav engagement to so the troops on the edge there. You see them in square, need to push up and protect this flank. This is really good move. I mean, it was almost like that cab charge for the French was a diversion. Look at this guy in the front. Oh my God, he's like, man, <laughs> holy crap, where is this guy? Oh, this is a, oh, this is a British guy, but it looked like he was like a French officer and he's like, man, march forward. No, he's not, <laughs> he's dead. But that was kind of cool. I wish there was more of that. And there's another one over here. He's like, man, hold, hold infantry. And I, they need more of that. They need more of that in this game but uh, yeah here comes the look at the look the the uh, French just pushing forward and they are just pushing these lines right now as the British desperately try to hold on here and uh, maintain this ridge line the French have pushed up their reinforcements as well uh, we've got a lot of uh, French have kind of taken this high ground here and in terms of the buildings, they have taken all of the buildings extremely fast. By the way, guys, do we have Prussians? We've got some cav over here. But is this considered the Prussians? I, I don't think so. I mean, they had more than just cav. So I don't think the Prussians are going to be showing up to save the day today. It might just be up to be, you know, it might just up, be up to the British to win this one. Sorry, words are hard. But uh, we've got some 13th Regiment of Infantry, 54th Line Infantry. Oh, I love it, man. See that smoke just come out there? Look at that. They've conquered the British artillery. Now they stand next to it victoriously. And uh, this flank is now being engaged as well. But I feel like just watching this battle, it feels like the French are just using this line as a bit of just like a distraction. And it's more going to come down to this line to win this battle. But the British, yeah, they've got to fall back or so. Oh, wait, what's this? Whoa, what is this? We got some, some line infantry from Nassau. Very cool. Huge force coming from, is this the, is this the Prussians? I think this is the Prussians. Yeah, because they're, they're, okay, Prussia has arrived so early on and they're behind the French forces. 
Okay, well, this is going to make things interesting. So they must have been hiding in this tree, and they, the players agreed to wait. Obviously, historically, the Prussians showed up. This is crazy. I'm just as surprised as the Prussians showing up as Napoleon. Uh, but, but yeah, no, it's great to see the Prussians here and uh, have the full, like, Waterloo experience. But, yeah, the Prussians are coming, and they're going to actually flank a lot of the French troops here. So that's going to really slow down their, their advance. Now, obviously, the Prussians, they have the Union Jack, right? Only because it's so one player can control them all. If you get, so, like, technically, they're under one faction, which is the British. But, uh, you know, if you're going to have a 1v1, you got to... You get what I'm saying? Like, that's why they don't have the Prussian flag. Is because one player is controlling them. That's uh, yeah. I'm doing a terrible job explaining that, but yeah. Here comes the Prussians. The the French are lining up, ready to hold against this uh, reinforcement force. He's got some Voltigeurs. Vol <laughs> uh, uh, you like that little French attempt to pronounce French? Voltigeurs trying to hold there. Um, we also have some line infantry. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to try to hold against this huge Prussian force that is massing up. And the artillery is open to being attacked. So they've got to be careful. They might want to send up some line infantry to protect this artillery. But, uh, yeah, it's getting... Look at this. Look at the mini-map. It's getting, it's getting interesting. It's getting real interesting. Look at more British forces formed up over here. This is more Prussians coming over to support. The, the French need to quickly... Just keep pushing back the British. And then once they have them falling back, turn around and deal with the Prussians. But yeah, they're constantly just overextending uh, the British lines. Or like they're extending further than the British lines and just firing on the flank. And slowly but surely causing more and more units to break. And uh, the British lines are really, really taking some casualties here. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough fight. It's gonna be a tough fight. But let's see what the Prussians can kind of bring some relief here for these uh, these British lines. All they have to do is kind of sit and wait here. Now the uh, the French still have their cab. The French have their cab way in the back here. We got the ninth ch 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 chasseur of cheval. Uh, we've got the fourth chasseur cheval. Third. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, ninth. Uh, let's see. And uh, some Lancers. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, the British are kind of being defensive with their Cav. They're kind of sitting back and being defensive with them. So they're just kind of waiting and see what they're going to do. Which is smart. You don't want to go out. Because that's a... I'm pretty sure the... Yeah, the French still have a ton of Cav. So that's what it's going to come down to for the French. To win this battle. Is to win it with Cav. Because... I don't really see a lot of cav for the British slash Prussian forces. Uh, and if they can just overwhelm with cav, I think they got this one. So it's all about how he plays this uh, this battle out with his cav. Uh, and now, finally, the Prussians are beginning the uh, uh, full assault here. You know, they are full on pushing the French lines. Look at that. The French have formed a nice straight line. Ready to hold. And he's got his one unit here. Oh, no, no. He's losing his artillery. Oh, he has more cav over here. Holy crap. The French have so much cav. That is awesome. So they're going to they're gonna charge the rear of this uh, Silesian, Silesian land there. Trying to uh, quickly break them before they lose all their artillery. And there they go. They do break them with a nice uh, rear charge there. That's going to protect mo most of his artillery. But there's going to be much more lines coming. And ooh, this is kind of awkward. He's... Yeah, this is going to be a bad angle for these troops. The French got to be licking their lips at this point because they are going to kill a ton of these guys as they run vertical across the you know these lines. 
it's not good. But yeah, an epic fight here. Epic stand for these troops. And just look at this mini-map. Look at this mini-map. You got the Prussians coming in here. French kind of surrounded. What is going on over here? Oh my god, the British are going for a cav charge. They're going to try to clean up this French cav that are behind enemy lines, behind their lines. So there they go, they're going to charge in. And the uh, French barely get a counter charge there. Very epic, very cool. But there's going to be a ton of British cav closing in. Fourth Hussars moving up, ready to take on the French. I don't know if the French can hold here. I just don't think they have enough cab to hold. And the British might take this one. And this is going to be a huge victory for the British because they just cleaned up the, uh, the rear flank. That's one less flank they're going to have to worry about. Oh, my God. Look at these Dutch Hussars. Look how cool their uniforms are. Bright blue. Yep, sure enough, the French were not ready for that cab charge, and they get obliterated. Now, of course, we saw that the French still have a ton of cav, which they are actually moving forward. I think they're going to go ahead and engage. And once again, he's doing this column formation. I don't know if this is like a tactic of his, but I've never really seen this before. It's like a wedge, you know, like a wedge formation. But yeah, this is... um. Yeah, he's, I think the French are quite upset about that cav engagement, and he wants to start chipping away at the British cav. He's holding his position here, though. Giving the British more time. British line still holding against the French. And the, Fr the French still desperately holding against the Prussians. Doing a good job, though. Doing a very good job holding against the Prussians. We have that French cav still on the flank of the Prussians, ready to move in. Of course, we're seeing the Prussians kind of form square over here, trying to protect the flank of their lines. It's good for the line infantry. Like, we have these grenadiers here. They're going to do great because, obviously, you're not going to be... You're not going to be as effective in square formation against line infantry, so that's going to be a huge help. So even just that cav sitting on the flank doing nothing is still helping this line infantry. So, very juicy fighting here, very brutal battle, and what? Look at these lines. Look at the look at the the French are literally fighting back to back. And this further, like, if you go up this way, that's like, they're trying to curve around, but they also got to protect the flank because of the Prussian reinforcements. Very cool. Very cool situation. So, let's go over this way. See the French, uh, did they, did they fight? Or did the British retreat? Oh, I think they had a, yeah, they had a cav engage. We missed it, guys. I do apologize about that. They had a, a, a cav engagement over here. The Br the French defeat the British, and now they're once again trying to move behind enemy lines to do some damage. There's some artillery over here. Wait, no. Yeah, no, there's artillery over here. They could easily take out with, like, one unit or something. But I think they're going to stay together just in case the British go for another cav charge. They're forming up again. The British still have a ton of cav. There's so much cav on the battlefield right now. It's insane. But yeah, they're they're kind of forming up too. Let's go back over to this this battle here. They are breaking a lot, a lot of the British lines. We have artillery over here that lumbered up, but they're just kind of sitting here. The Dutch horse artillery. The British just holding their ground, trying to just hold this ridge line. But it's as time goes on, it's looking more and more difficult for them as they slowly lose more and more men. Look at this. This is so cool. I always love just like you got the bodies here surrounded by the artillery, the line right behind them. This looks really cool. Our men are running, sir. Uh oh. The French have some troops fleeing from the battle. The Prussians are definitely causing a putting a dent into the into their lines, but look at this massive charge by the French. 
going for the back lines of the Prussians. This is huge. And it's really up to the French Cav to try to win this flank. And you can see the Prussians are panicking right now. Holy breakage. That is a huge break. And the Prussians have lost a huge chunk of their army against this Cav charge. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. And now the British are falling back. And that's what you kind of have to do. You have to keep reforming the, your lines, preventing a flank. And look at, they almost, they've fallen back so far that they actually can join lines with the, uh, the Prussians. Which it looks like is, is what's happening. Right, do we have a, oh, we got a big cav engagement in the back lines, guys. Big cav engagement. It looks like, it looks like the French are winning this. Yes, certainly seems like they're winning that one. And at this point, I mean, the British, they've got to be running out of cav. I think this is their last force here, which could do some damage. We'll see what happens. But the British might want to send in these, these depleted units here and start firing at the flank of the cav because they need to start chipping away at these French numbers. I just don't think this is going to be a... A good engagement for the British. Oh, they still have, oh, they still have more cap. What are they? Was there a fight over here as well? I think they're just chasing down this unit, trying to prevent them. Because what happens is when you go through the tree line in Napoleon, it does slow down your unit in in NTW three. So more British cav trying to come up here. If I was the French, I would attack now before these reinforcements showed up. But they're just kind of lining up, and here they go. Here they go. This is, he's moving in. Another huge cav engagement underway. Just had some of the best engagements with cav in this battle. Very fun to watch. And the British are falling back. Not a bad idea. I think they're going to fall back and regroup with the reinforcement cav. They need every single horse soldier they can get. <laughs> essentially let's go back over to the line infantry where you can see uh, the French have formed their line and the good thing about the cav crushing this flank is now all this line infantry who are fighting the Prussians over here they can start swinging oh, around great, so once again they're gonna they're going to extend past the British and Prussian lines and get around them. And that's going to cause some major issues. But there's some major, uh, major breaking over here and loss of morale. And look at this. It seems like they finally the British and Prussians are going to have a, a small victory here, which is going to help them out a ton. You can see the French are now falling back. The French do not like this. They're taking too many casualties. They're falling back their lines and reforming. And here we go. Cav engagement is underway, guys. Underway. Who's going to take this one? It looks like the British are actually dominating this Cav engagement. It was really smart of them to fall back to their reinforcement Cav. And that's definitely going to give them the edge in this Cav engagement. And yeah, huge break. Huge break by the French. So another small victory for the British. Another small one right there. Back over here, the cav is uh, reforming. So I think this is the last of the French cav. I think the British have done a really good job of just, you know, it's been pretty balanced between the cav, you know, like they both kind of killed each other. You know, they both are eliminating each other. I, and I think it's going to come down, even if you just have one Cav unit more than your opponent, that could give you the victory. I mean, Cav is so devastating in this game, in this mod. You know, all it takes is one good Cav charge and you can win your battle. But this is also really concerning for the uh, French, or not the French, the English uh, or British alliance, I should say. Um, it, this is really concerning because of this flank here. 
Let's, I think it's going to be hard to stop because the British, yeah, they're doing a good job of holding here and they do need to quickly kill these troops here. I'm just worried about this flank over here and they probably need to send up some reinforcements. They've got a lot of troops in the back here. Might want to start shifting them down this way to form an L and protect the flank of these lines. I think the, uh, the French are going to go for this building right here which is going to give them a nice stronghold position. But the French have been completely wiped out from the, the rear. Or like, you know, taken away from the rear of the British. So, good job on the British Cav. I would start to move the British Cav back to the front line and see where you can use them. But, you know, th there's so many units on this battlefield that it's I'm sure it's very challenging to micro everything. And look at the British are still holding this building. They're still holding the building. French are now falling back as well over here. Oof. The British, look at that. The French are falling back everywhere. A huge break going on as the British charge in and try to break the French lines. This is actually a really good play here because if they break through the French, what they can do is push through here, swing around, and have these French uh, troops surrounded. Look at this huge melee. Oh, this is awesome. This is just awesome. The British are starting to turn around this battle. Extremely close fight. And now, you know, this is where the British are now licking their lips and they're like, all right, what do we do now? We've got a flank open. Where do we push? And they could, they could push everywhere. I mean, they could push a little here, could push a little over here. Uh, here we go, the French cab coming over to support. They're like, do not break infantry. Cav support is here. Why does the cab feel so slow in this battle? I don't know, it's weird. Oh, they're exhausted, that's why, and they're going uphill. Yeah, I th ooh, yeah. A huge, huge break in the French lines. I don't know if charging charging in the cab like that's going to do you any favors. I would concentrate all the artillery fire on this position and try to protect it with arty fire. Over here, oh my god, are they charging in again or are they just getting closer? It looks like they're going into this sunken road that's definitely going to protect their lines. Like, the French are going to have a tough time killing them. But the French have a pretty solid position up on this hill. Giving them a nice high ground. But they got to be worried about the flank. I'm sure a lot of these French units will return to the battle. But will they do it quick enough? Oh man, that's got to be demoralizing as a French soldier. You just look over. Like maybe you're like fighting like over here. And you just look over and you see a bunch of French troops falling back. You know, that's why there's chain morale, you know, a chain break, you know, morale chain break. <laughs> Where if, as soon as you see some troops breaking, you're like, uh, uh, yeah, maybe we should break. Oh, but look at this. The French are causing a break in the British lines over on this flank. What a back and forth battle. Lots of breakage going on. Look at the morale is just dropping for the British lines. As the French troops continue to push up and uh, attack. This is such a close battle. Huge break over here in the British lines as well. Look at this. Yeah, I was a little confused. This is the area of the sunken road. I don't know why they pushed up their troops so far up. But they just got obliterated by these French troops. But again, there's so many troops on the battlefield. It is very challenging to micro this amount of troops. And look at the French are now, now that they've won over here, they're kind of reforming and trying to outflank the flanking uh, British troops. Also, a lot of the French forces are starting to return. And this has kind of backfired for the British because now their flanks are exposed. The troops they broke are returning to the battle. So they're going to get hit from all sides. He's just got to reform here, reorganize. Men, calm down. Reform. Push forward. 
battle's not over yet. Yeah, they saw their comrades breaking the British and they're like, no, we can still win this. Get back to the front. The men are fatigued, sir, and must rest a while. Nice, using canister shot now. He's got the artillery of Cheval. Six pounder. Trying to soften up the lines here. Using artillery to do all the hard, the hard, you know, the heavy lifting, the hard work. And it looks like the French have kind of abandoned this building. They're going to focus their attention over here. They're actually shifting over some line infantry. I assume to support this flank. Look at this. Is this another big melee? Yes, it is. We have the Grenadiers. Grenadiers fighting it out. The troops in the back here firing at the flank, causing the British to break. We have the British Cav massing in the center. And they are going for it. They're charging. They're fresh. Some of the cab is fresh, some of them are winded. It's a mix of different fatigue levels. And the French cab is going to meet them. And this might be, guys, the final showdown between the French and British cab. This could be the fate of this battle right here. Epic charge, Grenadier Cheval. Huge cav engagement. Oh my god. And the French look like they're taking this one. They've got infantry uh, forming square. It's almost like old guard forming square there. And that's aiding the uh, French cav in this engagement. And it's causing a mass rout for the British. The French just might take the edge here. In terms of cav, they might just take the edge. God, that is epic. Big break by the British. Lots of British forces are breaking. The Prussians are pretty much gone. And the French are now pushing up their lines. Look at that. What felt like the British were turning this battle around ended up being their own demise. I I mean, it, it couldn't have worked out better for the French player, General Cody, because... The British, yes, they broke like four or five units of French. They were falling back. But at the same time, the British broke over here, let the French flank around from both sides. And then the units that were breaking return to the battle and the, the British end up being surrounded from all sides except for one, which is behind them. And they are just mass retreating right now. They are falling back and really it's up to the British to hold this flank. They still have some good numbers here, but I don't know. It, I mean, it, you lose an entire flank. It's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough to try to hold on to this. This cab free to roam around now, now that the British cab has been destroyed, it's going to be tough to maintain these guys. They are exhausted. Look how slow they're charging into this artillery. There we go. They get the arty. The British are falling back. They're trying to consolidate their forces, which is a smart move. But the cab looks like they're spearheading ahead. And they're preventing this force from being able to join up with their other wing of army, which is just the morale is deteriorating. Look at that. Just turning orange. Men are breaking. Uh, the British army is on full retreat. Full retreat. So while we were watching the British kind of fall back here, I, I have a little historical question for you guys. What do you think would happen if Napoleon won Waterloo? Um, I personally believe that he would have tried to negotiate peace with um, pretty much everyone in Europe. And I think I truly believe that he would have been a bit more passive like after waterloo he would have not have gone you know like i don't know it's tough to say you know what i mean like because 
most of the time, Napoleon was being defensive. Like, most wars were declared against Napoleon. So, if he was able to win Waterloo and negotiate peace after the victory, maybe he would have been content on just ruling France. You know what I mean? And, and that's it. But it's hard to say. You know what I mean? It, obviously, what-ifs are almost impossible. But this is... Okay, hold that little thought there. Uh, this is a very good move by the British and the last move they can really do here because they've got to get aggressive. And the reason they got to get aggressive is because they need to break the, these French troops here so they could quickly turn and address these French troops that are still chasing down the, uh, the British. But a lot of French lines are starting to wrap around. French Cav running down the breaking troops making sure they do not return. But, you know, it's tough to say because even if they won Waterloo, you still had Russia to deal with and a lot of other powers, you know. It was only really Prussia and the British here, which, of course, the British had a lot of, like, Dutch and stuff in their army. But it's tough to say that even if Napoleon wins at Waterloo, that he still could hold on to being an, the Emperor of France and, you know, negotiating peace. Because what's worst case for the British, right? Like, oh, we lost Waterloo, but we are an island nation and Napoleon can't get to us because our navy is still intact. You know what I mean? But maybe they'll be just sick of all the fighting and they'll just negotiate peace and be like, whatever, you can be the Emperor of France, but that's it, you know? I don't know. I don't know. But here we go. More forces pushing around. They finally have crushed the British flank here. And it's not looking too good for the British. But there's still a chance. If they can pull off a miracle charge, there is still a chance. And it looks like he is moving up on this artillery. He could probably take it out with a quick charge. Look at the morale of the French. Starting to uh, uh, decrease a little bit there. Starting to waver a little bit. And this huge French line starting to push around the flank. Alright, now we got some light regiment pushing up to the, uh, the artillery. And the British are getting very aggressive here. Very good to see that because that's what they have to do. The French are still quickly trying to get over there. They've got to hurry up. Because I, you know, I would say the French, this line alone, a bit at a, a disadvantage. You know what I mean? Well, there's some breaking going on here. What's happening here? I don't know. It's still tough to say. But this is this is looking a little worrisome for the French. And that's why he's falling back. That's what he needs to do. Basically, fall back to your reinforcements. You'll see this all the time in NTW3. Just a lot of falling back, regrouping, and whatnot. But we'll go ahead and fast Our forward a little bit. Running, Ooh, who's breaking? The calf? Ooh. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the French calf's breaking. But they've got... Another unit of French Cav just, yeah, making sure these British troops do not return. Um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of fighting it out here. The British are holding. Um, French Cav coming. Oh, this might be the deal breaker. French Cav going for a charge on this light regiment. I don't think they can form square. And this might be the deal breaker, guys. This might be the nail in the coffin. Yeah, sure enough. They break this unit, but they're able to hold on. This unit forms square. Let's see if they can recover. And look at French troops are breaking from this line. Lots of French troops are breaking. This is an absolute close battle here. Look at the balance of power starting to return to the favor of the British. Let's see. Well, it's still not in their favor, but a little bit. I don't know. It's still going to be a tough battle for the British. But if the French don't get reinforcements soon, this is going to be very difficult for them. And this cav, this cav needs to start killing some people. What a battle. The British are still going strong. Oh, they break, another unit breaks here. Let's see, the cav's going to go back in since that square formation is breaking. And every time they make another line unit form square, that puts the British at a disadvantage because 
like I said earlier, a line unit that is in square cannot fight as effectively against a line unit that is not, well, th that's in a line, not in a square, you know what I mean? Look at this, he's chasing, he's chasing the cav almost. And the French are pushing up this small unit, I think broke and is returning to the battle. Morale is going back up for the French, it's just so back and forth. There goes the charge, there goes the charge of cav, here's the officer. He's like, ah, vive la France. They form square right at the end there. The officer's caught in the middle of it. He is able to escape. Very, oh, but they still break regardless. Maybe it's the line infantry. Oh, this is not looking good for the British. And now that the French reinforcements are on the British flank over here, it's looking like they're going to wrap up this battle. I don't think the British can, can win this one. And history... History might change here. It's still not over though. I don't want to, the fat lady is not singing yet, okay? Uh, she's not singing yet, but is, she's warming up her vocals, you know, her vocal cords. She's warming them up. That's what it seems like. Lots of breaking, lots of breaking. Oh yeah. I think, I think, okay, now what she's singing. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. They've got artillery behind the flank. Look at this. That is brutal. There you have it, guys. We're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit because it is almost an hour long battle. Uh, the British pushing, oh, I'm sorry, the French uh, pushing up, British doing a counter push. This is like their last huzzah as they charge in. Bayonets fixed. They're going in, trying to break the, the French lines. They do running, cause sir. a couple of them to break, but there's just too much. There's too many French. And uh, it looks like, yeah, this is going to be. Uh, all wrapped up right here as history changes and the French win Waterloo and that's what I want to hear down in the comments below let me know what you think would happen if Napoleon won Waterloo there goes their general <laughs> and there is the battle guys so wow so the French were greatly outnumbered because of the Prussians by like a little less than 4,000. But, oh my god. That is just some crazy kills here. Look at that. Almost 6,000 dead the, uh, of British and almost 3,000 dead French. Look at that. Well, actually 6,000 did die, I guess, because of friendly fire? Question mark? But yeah. Oof. What a fight. If we look at kills... The Cav just owning the top of the leaderboard. The French Cav honestly won them that battle. And then we've got some Chasseur. Is it, this is also Cav, right? Chasseur. Well, no, no, no. This is Dismounted Cav? Question mark? <laughs> Chasseur means Hunter, right? I don't know. But uh, yeah, 200 kills, 180. Very good fight. So a big thank you to General Cody for sending this in. I honestly want to do more of these historical battles for napoleon i'd love to do more scenarios if you guys want to take part join my discord thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this epic fight at waterloo and i'll see you next time on the battlefield oh and before we go hey let's watch that intro one more time My enemies are many, my equals are none. In the shade of olive trees, they said Italy could never be conquered. In the land of pharaohs and kings, they said Egypt could never be humbled. In the realm of forest and snow, they said Russia could never be tamed. Now they say nothing. They fear me, like a force of nature, a dealer in thunder and death. I say, I am Napoleon. I am Emperor.